when we come back to Kemet. We come back to the Kepara, that means transformation. We're going through a transformation, a spiritual transformation from the Ma'afa of the spiritual enslavement that we have gone through and understanding how Kepara is about transformation and resurrection and we're going to see Kepara and the scarab on top of his head. And that's why some of us really, why would they put a bug on top of a human, on a, a, an anthropomorphic or a human form? because they understood the mind goes through transformation. Were they also seeing that the fact that the human skull was also identical to the top of the scarab that represents where the transformation would take place in your mind? Wasn't it the mind that shut down to make you a slave by transforming you into an eternal slave, or at least trying to? That's right. It's symbolism that they used, the Karihebs, the, Ka the Karihebs, also called the Hymnetters, who was the servant of Amun and the temple, who had to go to school for 40 years. They're the ones that gave us the future that we get prophecy from. They're the ones who were able to transcend time and space of the spiritual mind. Dr. George G.M. James, our great ancestor and great scholar who wrote The Stolen Legacy, and in his book, The Stolen Legacy, and if you don't have this book, I think you should have it on your shelf. Here, Dr. George G.M. James, he points out in The Stolen Legacy, Dr. George G.M. James tells us that the Greek philosophy was an offspring of the Egyptian mystery. It involved a process of discipline or purification, both for the body and the soul. Since the mystery system offered the salvation of the soul, it also placed great emphasis upon its immortality. The Egyptian mystery system, like the modern university, was the center of organized culture, and candidates entered it as a leading source of the ancient culture. So the grades of students in the mystery system were and the Egyptian mystery system had three grades. The students were, we got the mortals or probationary students who were being instructed but who had not experienced the inner vision. So that's what we were enacting, reenacting, when we were at the temple of Karnak. We were reenacting re that spirit of raising brothers and sisters. Okay, so we go through these various stages and you saw the silver collar symbolizing the Tahuti. And then also we see that the intelligentsias, those who attained the inner vision, and had received the mind or know us because we're all going through this spiritual transformation or new awakening. We don't come into a culture with our culture intact. Many of us come into to this life, many times we have to learn who we are, in many cases on our own. Our families, our mothers, our fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers, many times they do not know this knowledge because our culture has been torn apart. So this is why we have got to pull the culture together so that way when a child is born into this life, they don't have to go through what you went through, trials and tribulations and all kinds of things before they can get to truly who we are as an African people. And then, of course, the third level, the creators of the sons of light who had become identified or united with the light, the true African spiritual consciousness. That's what this is all about, true African spiritual consciousness. So we've got to go through a transformation, a spiritual consciousness with each other. In order for us to be a people again, we've got to pull together brotherhood. We've got to pull together sisterhood. Because on the plantation, they taught us to hate ourselves. And hating ourselves, we didn't trust each other. And a lot of that is played out to this very day. So you see on the temples, the wasket. The wasket was represented as an initiation. The wasket did not, was not bestowed upon the person that it belonged to them, but it was always to remind them that this is a spiritual ancestral connection to our ancestors. So, of course, when we were out there, we were displaying a symbolic ceremony, bringing back into life, bringing back what our ancestors had. So we symbolically can see that we are truly brothers, raising our brother to the living perpendicular. The brothers that you see with the Wasquets, they previously, previously have been involved in the ceremony. So here our brother, Ned Petit Ra, who has complete trust that his brothers are going to raise him up. They're not going to drop him. They're not going to let him down. So he's truly got to walk in the spirit of brotherhood with his other brethren. So all these are symbolic uh, initiation into our ancestral way of life. And we go on and we see also Ramesu, who's also received the uh, Tehuti collar as well. And, and then, of course, we have our brother Pianchi, who's walking in the spirit of brotherhood. That's what we've got to be. That's what we've got to build here. We will not be a, a family if we're going to continue to try to rip each other off, 
if we're going to try to, if we're not going to have trust and respect for each other. So Brother, brother Payanki is now the Nihisi, he's in the Amsu Haru, and he's also been bestowed the almond collar as well.